Hello! So, I've got one of these that's pretty impressive, and this is a UK armed police, sort of ex-armed police surplus, uh, ballistic shield. So, it kind of, functionality-wise, you know, you hold it a bit like a riot shield, but this is designed, you know, to stop bullets, projectiles, rather than sort of rocks, stones, knives, that sort of thing. So what I'm going to actually spend a lot of this video talking about is the difference between riot shields and ballistic shields, because a lot of people don't seem to understand that, or they think one is useless because the other serves a different purpose. There was a bit of an argument going on on the Discord the other day about this, um, so what I'm going to try and do and explain in this video is why they're good for different purposes, and how in an ideal world you might have something that can do both, but at the moment you kind of can't because of materials. So I believe this is an NIJ level 3 A1, which means it's pretty similar in levels of protection to sort of the top tier of regular Kevlar body armour. The idea being that it will stop pretty much any pistol round, um, maybe not really high power sort of magnum rounds or things like um, you know, five um, the FN57 sort of by 28 millimeter armor piercing round, but against nine millimeter 45 ACP, you know, any of the common rounds, even if shot from a submachine gun with more velocity, it should stop these fines. So basically, it's a fairly big shield as you can see, and the idea with these, I guess, is you've got little cuts on either side because these are meant to be ambidextrous, so you could have your pistol or whatever aiming through there, or you could expose just a little bit to advance with it. Uh, you know, not showing too much of your face. Um, so obviously you'd be wearing a Kevlar vest and a helmet with it if you're an armed police officer. And how they either do this again is the person with the shield has a pistol with it, or you have people following behind them with submachine guns or rifles or whatever. Uh, so this guy's job is basically to stop projectiles coming in while the other people shoot. Um, so people who've played something like Rainbow Six Siege, they're pretty familiar with how these shields work, but bear in mind, Something like this, which is just NIJ level 3A, only effective against pistol rounds, not rifle rounds. This is still fairly heavy and it would start wearing on your arm after a while. So let's start talking about how these differ from riot shields, because I have a couple of riot shields. So these are designed, as I said, to stop bullets. Riot shields are designed to stop bricks, bats, you know, molotovs, or stuff like that. So if you have a riot shield and somebody shoots a gun at it, it's probably going to go through no issue. Um, it doesn't protect you from firearms. However, this shield, although it protects you from, you know, pistol caliber rounds, the issue is, if somebody threw a Molotov at these, they can be quite flammable. You know, if somebody attacks this with a machete or a crossbow or something like that, they can pierce quite easily. The thing you have to bear in mind is regular Aramid Kevlars are not designed to be kind of melee weapon proof, you know, slash and stab resistant. They are designed pretty much to be, you know, good at stopping crushing project projectile rounds coming through. So a crossbow could penetrate this even when, you know, like, pistol rounds can't. Um, so, that's an important thing to bear in mind. So, riot shields are also a lot lighter. This is heavier, even though it's smaller than my full-size armadillo shield. Um, the round riot shield I've got is way, way lighter than this. So, this is going to be much slower and tire your arm out a lot more if you had to, you know, constantly be moving it up and down. So, this is not suitable for riot conditions. The point of a riot shield is it's, as the name implies, designed for riots. Armoured shields, you know, against calibre rounds like this, are designed for kind of like armed police raiding teams or whatever. So, as said, in an ideal world, what you might have is something that has both NIJ level 3 or better protection, with a riot shield sort of front polycarbonate style design. Riot shields tend to be made from polycarbonate or aluminium. Aluminium, obviously, or aluminium if you're American, is um, just a composite metal. Uh, polycarbonate is just a very tough plastic. Again, it doesn't stop pistol rounds or anything like that, but the point of polycarbonate is good luck breaking it with a sledgehammer, you know, a machete, anything like that, you're not going to do it. Or if you can, it's going to take you lots and lots and lots of swings where basically somebody just stands there and lets you do it. If it's somebody fighting back, you're not going to have a chance against it. There's plenty of videos on YouTube, I know I've done some videos on it, but for all the people going, oh you're a pussy, you should hit the shield harder. If you watch um, videos where companies actually do proper tests on their riot shields, there are literally videos, you know, where they get, like, three people to attack shields with axes and machetes at once, or, you know, run trucks over them, and well-built polycarbonate riot shields will not break from those sort of impacts, because, again, polycarbonate is tougher than what humans can unleash at it. Um, with my riot shield, it's basically been, over the course of using it in lots of videos, little bits have chipped off now and then, and bear in mind, it was a damaged surplus riot shield to begin with. Um, so, yeah. Ballistic shields and riot shields serve a different purpose. For the people saying, you can't buy these in the UK, right? How it works is, companies that make these for the police aren't going to sell them to civilians. When the police sell them as surplus, you can buy them as a civilian. Whether or not the police like you buying these is another issue, but it's not illegal to own them. So, thanks to, you know, money and everything like that, 
how the real world w works. If you want to get one of these, just wait till the police sell it as surplus because they want to get some money back and they will happily sell it to civilians in that regard. Just like how, you know, the army doesn't like you buying certain bits of their old mill surp, but they still sell it on anyway because they want it, the MOD wants to get money back. So if you're interested in these sort of shields, they occasionally pop up on eBay. Um, I was quite lucky, this was somewhere in the 30 to £40 pound price range. If you want to find these and riot shields, I found the best thing is to actually be less specific in the keywords and just literally type in police shield. Um, and that seems to bring up both the ballistic shields and the riot shields. Whereas if you sometimes type in riot shield or ballistic shield, you actually get less results. So there you go. Um, combined with an armoured vest and helmet and everything, this would be fairly good in terms of levels of protection. But bear in mind, this and a riot shield serve totally different purposes. This is for handguns, the riot shield is for like molotovs, bricks, knives, everything else. Um, if you use the wrong one in the wrong situation, you could get yourself killed. So no, these aren't better than riot shields, you know, for a riot scenario, and a riot shield wouldn't be better than this if somebody was shooting at you. You have to use them for their specific applications.